I'm Michelle Krista Smith, actor, stunt woman, speaker, educator. Today we're not doing a staff tutorial, we're doing a bodywork tutorial and we're learning reverse illusions. I love reverse illusions. I've been doing them since I was a baby and I will continue doing them till the day I die. And I feel like they're a little bit more challenging than forward illusions, there's a little bit more mechanics involved. However, I think they're a lot more useful. Here's my disclaimer about illusions. They look cool, they're badass, they're quite simple when you understand the mechanics of it. However, they are a skill that requires a bit of space and opening in your hamstrings. So it's really, really important that you warm up your body. That means you have to stretch, you have to get your hamstrings mobile, you have to warm up your glutes, your stability, everything. This is not a skill for a very beginner. Now the mechanics of a reverse illusion are very similar to the forward illusion, except for that you're just starting it in a different way. So your forward illusion, you're starting in this open position, whereas the reverse illusion, you're stepping across the line, so your body is already turning before you go down. So that's the major difference between your forward and reverse illusion. We're gonna start with this reverse illusion facing the left side. I'm using my right leg as my leg that I'm rotating on and I'm kicking my left leg. So that means I'm gonna to turn to the left side. If you were using your left leg, you would do the opposite and face the right side. So either one is up to you. Pick the leg that you like the best. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this right foot and you're gonna take a step across. And as you take a step across, you're just gonna practice your needle, just like we did in the forward side when we did this. We're gonna do the same skill, only this time I'm gonna take that step across and it's gonna happen at the side. Now what I want to happen is this left leg that's going up the back, I want it to be straight to the side. I don't want it on an angle towards the back or the front. So what you're looking for is where you step your foot so that by the time you bring your body down and your leg goes up, it's straight to the side. So there's a little bit of pattern and plane involved, just like we have when we use our staff. So that means that for some of you, you may have to take a step to the corner so that when your leg goes up, it goes straight up to the side. It's gonna be different for everyone, and this is why it's gonna be really important to have some sort of visual aid with you, whether that be a teacher, a partner, or a mirror, or a video, use that because it's really important. Your reverse illusion is not gonna go well and it's not gonna happen for you if you can't get your leg on pattern. So after you've practiced your step, getting that leg going straight to the side, then you're ready to just follow the path and go all the way through. This is the only time you are allowed to put your hands down. That's it. No more hands after this exercise. So I'm gonna be starting, I'm starting on my right foot, I'm gonna to shift to my left. As my foot steps, I'm bringing my arms up. For now, I'm gonna put them on the ground as my leg comes up. My foot is starting at four o'clock and it's going counterclockwise across the clock. And my body, rather than going behind my leg, like on my forward illusion, my body is actually going in front of my leg even though it's going to the back so it's a little bit confusing back there so just make sure that you take your time and go slow because there's really only one way to go so my foot is starting at four o'clock it comes down up through three two one twelve then i'm going across the back all the way across then it's coming through eleven ten nine eight now from here i'm not done i have to get my foot back to where it started on this side. So as my body comes up, I have to turn back to the side I started on so that my foot can end in this four o'clock position. Your priority is to start and end your swinging leg, which for me is my left leg, in the exact same position that it started in. So again, I start on my right foot because I'm gonna shift to my left. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of momentum. My arms are gonna come up and over, as I shift to my left, I'm taking a step to the side or a little bit to the corner. You're gonna find that space for you. Then I'm going down. My foot is going up the clock on one side, straight up to the side. We're coming around the back. Now it's going down the other side of the clock. As my foot is coming down, it's got to swing behind this right leg here. So I have to come up, turn my chest back to the side that I started on. 
Now, where you might get confused is in this position here. So you've already gone all the way up and over. My leg is coming here, it's going down this side. I have to bring my chest up, but as I bring my leg through, I have to turn my body to get to the other side. That's where the connection of your leg and your body is gonna be really important. So if you're disconnected there, and you get to here, I've lost that connection and I'm not gonna be able to use the momentum of my leg swinging down to turn my body to get to the other side. So essentially I've lost all of my momentum. And an illusion is a skill of momentum. Imagine you had a 10 pound weight on that swinging foot. All you would have to do is initiate the rotation, initiate the swing, and that weight is gonna carry you around in the circle on its own. So you have to imagine that that's what's bringing your body around. It's not your body and not you trying to arch up. It's that leg swinging through that brings you to the other side. Now, once you've practiced that clock with your hands on the ground and understand the mechanics and where you need to go, it's time to take your hands away and just go for it. Remember, your priority is to end where you started and have the swinging leg be the leg that's creating the momentum and driving the bus. On my right foot, my arms are gonna swing up and over. That's gonna give me a little bit more momentum to help my leg swing through back to where it started. And I'm gonna throw my hands into a low V as I go. And that's gonna keep me from touching the floor and clean up the skill a lot. So start on my right foot, I transfer to the left, I take my step, making sure my leg goes straight up to that back side, come all the way through, and up and over. Here's a couple problem areas that you might run into. One, you're losing your balance. And just like in the forward side, that just means that you're pushing your weight too far forward. So you're probably leading with your chest, almost like you're gonna do a forward roll. And you don't need that. Your weight is literally replacing itself down there. So make sure you bring your chest down and not out first. There's a difference. So make sure you bring your chest down and not out first to stay right on top of that foot in the middle. The second problem you might run into is you might be doing this arching chest thing. And again, just like on the forward side, that means you're not prioritizing your foot being the first thing around and you're trying really hard to get to the other side that you're over committing. And what you have to do is actually be patient. Wait for your leg to come around and make it here and your chest will be there, especially if you remember to stay connected at all times. So that little bit of arch at the end shows me that you're disconnected from what your leg is doing because now your chest and your back is leading and your foot is forgotten at the back. So stay connected, your foot is your priority. That is what's leading the circle and leading the swing. One of the things that I do that I find helps me out a lot is as I'm coming around and this foot is swinging through, I actually pull up into my releve. For me, that's where I find my balance, especially if I've gone a little bit off balance when I started my illusion, which still happens. But you need to learn how to recover with it without putting your hands down. And for me, pulling up is my solution. And for a review, I'm standing on my right foot. I'm gonna spin on my right foot, so I'm gonna transfer over to my left. I'm gonna take a step to the side or the corner, wherever works out for me, so that my leg at the back can go straight up to the side. My arms are swinging through to a V. That leg comes up through four, three, two, one, across 12, and then it's gonna go down the other side. As this is happening, my body and my legs stay connected, and then at the very last second, as that leg's trying to swing through, I'm gonna turn my body to end up where I started. So that's pretty much it for our reverse illusion tutorial. Like I said, it's my favorite. I do it a lot. You'll see it a lot in my videos. I think it's super useful and it looks beautiful and it feels awesome when you can do it correctly. As I mentioned before, if you're not quite there in your hamstring mobility, do not worry about doing illusions. They're probably not the skill for you yet. So take the time, gain the mobility and the strength before you start doing these illusion tutorials. And before you go anywhere, hit that subscribe button down there. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me what you liked about this tutorial or other tutorials or videos that you'd like to see. I really love 
and appreciate all of your feedback. It makes me so happy. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next video.